Hi, my name is Noura, and my colleagues Dara, Farikda, and Samer will be talking about the etiology of obsessive compulsive disorder. And here is just an outline of what we're going to be presenting throughout the presentation. I'm going to be starting off with the introduction. Samer will be discussing the first article, Dara the second, Farida the third, and I'll be wrapping up the presentation. Okay, so OCD is a type of anxiety disorder where people have persistent unwanted thoughts or sensations known as obsessions that make them feel driven to do something repetitively. So obsessions are basically recurring thoughts, impulses, or images that cause a person anxiety or disgust. A person with OCD usually recognizes that these obsessions are a product of their mind and are excessive or unreasonable. Common obsessions include um, excessive concerns about contamination or harm, the need for symmetry or perfection, or forbidden sexual or religious thoughts. On the other hand, compulsions are repetitive behaviors or mental acts that a person feels compelled to perform in response to an obsession. They are usually aimed at preventing or reducing the distress experienced by a person or, f or of a feared situation. Compulsive rituals interfere significantly with daily activities, making a normal routine for a person impossible. There are five primary types of compulsive rituals. Cleaning to reduce the fear that real or imagined germs or chemicals will contaminate a person. Checking to reduce the fear of harming oneself or others by developing checking rituals. Ordering and arranging to reduce discomfort, where, where some OCD patients um, prefer to put objects in a certain order or arrange their household items in a symmetric fashion, as well as repeating and counting. So here is a typical OCD cycle, uh, starting off with obsessions that uh, a person experiences, followed by feelings of anxiety that are reduced by compulsive uh, rituals. Uh, these compulsive rituals, they induce temporary feelings of um, relief. However, these feelings are short-lived as uh, obsessions uh, occur once again, uh, making it a vicious cycle. According to the National Com Comorbidity Survey, OCD has a one-year pre prevalence of about 1% and a lifetime prevalence of 1.6%. Uh, it usually begins in late adolescence or, or early adulthood, however, it is not uncommon in children. Uh, unlike other disorders, uh, OCD is found equally common amongst men and women, and it co-occurs with other disorders, mainly depression. So here is the DSM-4 diagnostic criteria for OCD, and for an individual to be correctly clinically diagnosed with OCD, they must follow uh, the following criteria. For instance, one stresses that obsessions or compulsions cause marked distress, are time-consuming, or significantly interfere with the person's normal routine, occupational functioning, or usual social activities. So we decided to tackle the etiology of OCD from three different perspectives, the biological, cognitive, and sociocultural approach. And respectively, the first article investigates the possible presence of areas that may contain genes linked to the onset of OCD through a genome-wide linkage approach. The second article explores the different types of influence influences on OCD and how aggressive impulses and calculating behavior are potential early signs of OCD and how they may vary across individuals. The final article examines whether religiosity plays a role in the development of OCD among young Saudi Arabian females seeking professional help. Hello, my name is Sarah Moses and I'll be covering a peer-reviewed study on the genetic factors in the etiology of obsessive compulsive disorder. In the last two decades, there has been a rapid increase in the awareness of the significance of genetics to the etiology of many psychological maladaptive behaviors. On this same note, a number of psychiatric disorders have been found to have varying levels of genetic etiology. These disorders include autism, schizophrenia, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, major depressive disorders, and bipolar disorders. Research into the connection between genes and etiology have shown that genes often influence mental disorders in three different ways. First, they might instigate the organic cause of disease as in Alzheimer's. Secondly, they can also act as a source of abnormal development throughout one's lifetime. And thirdly, they can influence the individual's susceptibility to different disorders. It is in light of the genetic factors previously mentioned that research into the possibility of gene-based etiological factors is conducted. 
The study I examined set out to conduct genetic linkage analysis on cases of those with childhood onset OCD. As this is a genetic study, many of the terms throughout the article, and therefore my summary, are quite complicated. Because of this, I've included definition sections. In the first definition section, I've included the term that is essential to understanding the purpose and methods of the study. As shown, a linkage study is, con is conducted by genotyping, meaning mapping the gene makeup, of participants. These participants are related individuals, such as family, where the desired phenotype, such as having obsessive compulsive disorder, is present in some but not all of the family members. We can now look at the purpose of the study, which was to investigate the existence of genomic regions that may contain genes susceptible to OCD through a genome-wide linkage approach. The study was made up of 33 families to make a total of 245 individuals, each with their respective genotype data. These families meet criteria including DSM-4 OCD with symptoms beginning in 4H18, as well as not having any form of developmental disorder, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, or psychotic disorder. Furthermore, all families were of European descent and of the Caucasian ethnicity. I will now take you step by step through the method of the study. Clinical interviewing of individual participants was conducted at a number of sites. At UCSF UCSD in Minnesota, PhD level psychologists conducted the clinical assessments. While at Michigan sites, assessments were, were conducted by interviewers who had at least a master's degree coupled with some form of clinical training. Initial assessments aimed at establishing the existence and respective degree of OCD in various participants. Different sites utilized different measurements tools to conduct these assessments. The various measurement tools utilized included the Yale Brown Obsessive Compulsive Scale, the Schedule for Tourette and Other Behavioral Syndromes, and the Schedule for Affective Disorders and Schizophrenia for School Aged Children. Let me define a few terms before we move into the next part of this study's method. First, lymphoblasts are immature cells which proliferate uncontrollably and are found in bone marrow. Secondly, Fine mapping is a process of identifying genetic regions associated with specific diseases. And lastly, HOLDs higher or hierarchical levels of detail refer to the complexity of genetic region mapped. With these terms out of the way, we can now take a look at the rest of this study's methods. Genotyping of participants was done through blood or lymphoblastoid cells through gene analysis technology such as Illumina Linkage Panel 4B or the Illumina Human 610 Quad B chip. Once genotyping was completed, fine mapping was conducted on five genetic regions with high HOLD figures in order to attempt and identify genetic regions that could be associated with OCD. Let's go ahead and take another break to establish some basic definitions before we move on to the results. Co-inheritance refers to the event where two or more characteristics or phenotypes are transmitted from one parent to its offspring. Genetic linkage is a tendency for a certain trait to be linked to a certain gene. Now the results. Of the five genetic areas that were fine mapped, it was found that chromosome 1p36.33 to 1p36.32 had a close link and were characterized by co-inheritance. The analytical findings of this study with respect to chromosome 1p36.33 to 1p36.32 not only establishes a high likelihood of genetic linkage to OCD, but stands as one of the strongest linkage points found for OCD to date. These conclusions do lean toward an understanding that chromosome 1p36 exists in link with OCD, yet many other neuropsychiatric disorders, including major depressive disorder and eating disorders, have also been linked to this chromosome. Because of this, further follow-up studies are necessary in order to firmly establish the role and function of chromosome 1p36. Furthermore, while there does exist a marginal limitation in relation to the heterogeneity due to slight racial or ethnic variation, the major strength of this study was the size of the participant group and the respective genetic data generated through their participation. It is deriving from these factors that this study does establish the chromosome region 1p36 as a new genetic area of interest in the etiological study of OCD. Hi, my name is Dara Sabri and I will be presenting an article called Was Freud Partly Right on Obsessive Compulsive Disorder? 
This article shows how different types of factors influence OCD as well as how OCD itself varies among individuals and how the symptoms themselves could vary. The study shows evidence of high interpersonal ambivalence in OCD patients. Keep in mind that this study was limited and that it was generated in hopes of replicating and expanding older findings. What's interesting about this study is that it used a new tool named the Responsibility and in Interpersonal uh, Behaviors and Attitudes Questionnaire, which every participant filled out. In this study, the researchers' primary hypothesis was that the OCD patients would score higher when tapping responsibility and latent aggression. This is, of course, uh, unlike what they perceived the controls would do. The researchers also explored symptomatic uh, correlations of interpersonal attitudes in this experiment. They believed that if latent aggression and distrust are shown with an OCD symptoms, then positive correlations would show up with people who have severe OCD symptoms. There were 46 uh, in and out patients from the University Medical Center in Hamburg, Eppendorf, and 23 healthy participants. They focused on cognitive biases, where the subjects filled out OBQ, uh, OBQs, which assessed responsibility, uh, threat estimation, perfectionism, certainty, and the importance or control of one's thoughts. Now for the analysis and results. The researchers used factor analysis and analyzed excessive worry and responsibility, latent aggression and calculating behavior, and suspicions and distress. There was another test called the Multiple Voca Choice Vocabulary Test, which tested out each, uh, each of the participants' verbal intelligence. The RIBAQ, Responsibility and Interpersonal Behaviors and Attitudes Questionnaire, subscale, and the OBQ, which was mentioned in the previous slide, held results similar to a previous study, as well as the FPI-R, which is a Faberg personality inventory revised aggression of subscale. This added more to the validity of the subscales themselves because they were approved. Subjects with OCD had higher OCIR and social responsibility in comparison to healthy participants. This also proved part of the hypothesis. In the next slide, uh, you will see a table that has all the results comparing the healthy patients and the OCD patients. There were differences in interpersonal attitudes, which showed that there weren't specific differences in the amount of openness in the OCD patients' responses when, com when comparing them to the healthy participants. Another thing that's very, very important about this study is that there are no biases or socially undesirable attitudes, according to the researchers. As for the limitations in this experiment, there were quite a few. Latent aggression versus exaggerated morality in OCD isn't supported with empirical studies. And neither are the relationships with OCD and latent aggression. The research itself is unclear in regards to aggressive attitudes and whether they are prevalent to OCD symptoms or if they're a warning sign that one might develop the OCD. The cross-sectional nature of assessments. This study evidently did not find any indications that latent aggression does not have to do with the length of time of the illness and that it's compatible with both OCD patients as well as the healthy participants that were included in the study. 
so the research itself was not exact. The researchers that conducted the study had hoped to both imitate and expand their previous discoveries that assume that interpersonal ambivalence in OCD patients who were characterized with inflated responsibility and hypermorality and high latent aggression. The main hypothesis was that OCD patients would have higher scores on instruments tapping responsibility and latent aggression. So basically in conclusion, the experiment itself had few significant findings and reproved older theories of OCD including results of latent aggression. My name is Sarida and I'll be talking to you about article number 3, which uh, seeks to determine whether the mediocrity is a causal factor for the onset of OCD among young Saudi Arabian women uh, who are seeing a uh, mental profession. So in this study, uh, the participants were all women. Saudi Arabian uh, women aged uh, 14 to 30 years old. Uh, they were 15 uh, participants. They were also all Muslims and Arabic speakers. And uh, all of them were diagnosed with OCD with religious symptoms. And also all of them were seeing uh, mental, mental health professionals. So the measures that were used uh, in this study were a semi-structured interview of about 60 to 90 minutes and uh, written lessons uh, because, uh, in the, because the participants didn't uh, want the uh, interviewers uh, to record them um, vocally, so the only permitted uh, thing was a written record. Uh, and the interviews, as I said, lasted about uh, from 60 to 90 minutes. So after the interviews, uh, the results uh, found were that religiosity is the number one cause for the patients going to a psychiatrist. So the majority of the participants preferred having uh, a religious psychiatrist rather than a non-religious one. In fact, uh, all the participants, uh, most of them, said that they would feel more comfortable with a religious uh, psychiatrist because uh, they would understand their struggle and understand um, their illness. Uh, also, um, so, as I said, the number one cause for the patients going to a psychiatrist is religiosity. So, uh, that basically means that uh, the way they pray, the way they fast, the way they, um, they uh, do their, uh, their ablutions, all of this is uh, done in a very um, uh, abnormal way. Uh, they pray, uh, they could do the same prayer over and over again because they feel that it's not done right the ablutions over and over again and they would fast uh, just because they would feel a guilty uh, towards their religion. Uh, all of this led them to go see a psychiatrist. Uh, also feelings of guilt and low self-esteem emerged whenever they weren't completely in line with religion. Uh, finally, the conclusion drawn from the results is that religion is not experienced as a causal factor of OCD, but as one of the ways through which OCD is manifested. Also, uh, religious factors, uh, like I said in the previous slide, uh, like prayers, fasting, ablution, are more disturbing to the participants than non-religious factors. And that is what led them uh, to go see a psychiatrist because uh, they felt that the, the religious day-to-day uh, -day actions that they do uh, are manifested in an abnormal way. Uh, also, the participants uh, felt more comfortable and reassured having a religious psychiatrist that would understand better their illness. Uh, so these were uh, the, the conclusions drawn uh, from the results. 
Finally, the limitations of the study uh, was that there were no male participants, uh, the sample size was quite small, and there was a selection bias. All participants were from mental health clinics. So for further research, it would be interesting to see, do the same study on a uh, male, uh, on the male participants, and also uh, maybe uh, a bigger uh, sample size, so that uh, we could observe if uh, the results differ. Also, the, the fact that all participants were from mental health clinics restrained uh, the, the, the results or the observations because uh, they, there might be other people with the same illness who don't seek uh, professional help. Uh, and so, uh, they, further studies could also um, uh, look uh, more deeply into, into this. So this is it for this uh, article, and now uh, up to the conclusion. Thank you. To conclude, we found out from the first article that a high genetic linkage for the development of OCD has been found, specifically in chromosome 1p36. This may indicate that a biological cause for OCD is present. Among the strengths of this study was the large sample size and the genetic data generated. The results of the second article suggest that latent aggression and inflated responsibility may be indicators of OCD in patients, however, this may differ across individuals. One of the limitations of the study was that the hypothesis of the enhanced latent aggression versus the exaggerated morality in OCD wasn't supported by any empirical studies and neither was the relationship between latent aggression and OCD itself. The third article uh, suggested that while religion may not be a causal factor of OCD, it was one of the ways through which OCD was manifested in uh, Saudi Arabian females, and uh, among the limitations was the small sample size, therefore uh, indicating a low external validity. Um, hence, we can say that both biological and cognitive factors were found to play a role in the development of OCD, however other factors may also be in place. And here are just a list of the references we used to obtain our information. We hope that you enjoyed our presentation and found it informative. Thank you.